You know, every time Pastor Matt comes up here, I'm always standing in my seat like he's preaching my message. I might as well just stay here. But I love that about the Holy Spirit because that means that he is confirming the word of God that has already been spoken to my heart. And, you know, sometimes... We're a little stubborn and we need to hear things one or two or three or four or five or six more times before we really get it. <laughs> and I can say that first and foremost. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We're going to be coming from the book of Jonah. The book of Jonah, chapter one. Yes, the book of Jonah, chapter one. I had this story on my heart. I was teaching the kids um, last week about Jonah. And I, as I was reading through it, I was like, oh my goodness, there's so much in this story. There is so much, and there's not enough time to preach on everything that's in the story, especially with my long-winded self. So, the title of my message is, He is the God of Second Chances. Yes. He is the God of Second Chances. And what I love about the Lord is it's not even just a second chance. He'll give you a third chance, yes. and a fourth chance, yes. and a fifth yes. chance, and a sixth yes. chance, and a seventh chance. And the chances just keep going as long as you just keep turning to him and trusting in the blood of Jesus. Yes. Yes. So he is the God of second chances. Amen. Jonah 1, starting in verse 1, it says, Now the word of the Lord came unto Jonah, the son of Amittai, saying, Arise, go to Nineveh, that great city, and cry against it, for their wickedness is come up before me. But Jonah rose up to flee unto Tarshish from the presence of the Lord, and went down to Joppa, and he found a ship going to Tarshish. So he paid the fare, therefore, and went down into it to go with them unto Tarshish from the presence of the Lord. But the Lord sent, but the Lord sent a great wind into the sea, and there was a mighty tempest in the sea so that the ship was like to be broken. Then the mariners were afraid and cried every man unto his God and cast forth the wares that were in the ship into the sea to lighten it of them. But Jonah was gone down into the sides of the ship and he lay and was fast asleep. So the shipmaster came to him and said unto him, what? Meanest thou, O sleeper, arise, call upon thy God. If so be it that thy God will think upon us, that we perish not. We're going to go down to verse 15. So they took up Jonah and cast him forth into the sea, and the sea ceased from her raging. Then the men feared the Lord exceedingly, and offered a sacrifice unto the Lord, and made vows. Now the Lord had prepared a great fish to swallow up Jonah, and Jonah was in the belly of the fish three days and three nights. And we're going to stop there. In the belly of the fish, three days and three nights. Hallelujah. I'm just going to start off. My proposition is, and what I propose to you today, is that he is the God of second chances. Yes. That he is able to redirect. That he is able to rearrange. Yes. That he is able to prepare a way where there seems to be no way. Even if we have chosen that way. Even if we know that we know that God has spoken something to, something to our hearts. And we are rebelling against what God has said to us. Or we read the word of God and it just rubs us the wrong way. And we decide that we're going to pick and choose which portions of the word of God that we want to, we desire to follow. You know, the good portions yeah. of the word of God. And then we're going to kind of like push aside some of the other okay. stuff that we don't really 
uh, so much agree with or our flesh doesn't like. Yeah. Or maybe the preacher spoke a word that you knew was straight from the heart of God and straight from the pulpit and you desired, no, I'm not going to receive that today. Mm. And we push it aside. And that's exactly what this, see, Jonah wasn't a newbie. <laughs> He wasn't a novice. That's right. He wasn't a baby Christian. He was a man of God. Hello. He was a prophet. He was a man that knew God. He was a man that spoke from the heart of God to direct the people in the direction of righteousness. Yes. See, sometimes, and I love Pastor Matt, and he knows it, but sometimes he's up here and I'm like, Ooh, what he is saying, I know that I know is stepping on some toes. He steps on my toes. I know that he is a man of God and he is preaching truth and he is preaching righteousness. And that was what this man of God was doing. He was a prophet to point the people as a whole in the direction of righteousness and truth and godly living. But we have this, this city of Nineveh. That was not a godly city. And the word of the Lord now came to Jonah, the son of Anati, saying, Now, in this very moment, and I want to say this, in this time, in this season that we're living in, in this world that we are living in, Second Chronicles 16.9 says, For the eyes of the Lord run to and fro throughout the whole earth, to show himself strong mm. in the behalf of them whose heart is perfect toward him. And I want to say this, the Lord wants to show himself strong in his people. And that doesn't mean just strong in a sense. It also means to cure, to help, to repair, and to fortify. He wants to cure his people of sin. And that was done at Calvary. Yeah, he wants yeah. to fortify his people. Meaning that he doesn't want to just set you free at the moment of salvation. He wants to solidify you in the truth. He wants to fortify the word of God in your heart. That you would not waver. That you would not blow in the wind when the storm comes. And I was thinking, man, Lord, you sure know how to put a message together right after the hurricane. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but you know what I saw when I woke up in the morning of the hurricane? And God, please touch the people who have been truly affected yes. Yes. by this hurricane. But when I woke up in the morning, the sun was shining. Yes. And as I began to pray, me and I were on our way here. After every storm in your life, God wants to shine yes. the light of his word in your life. The sun wants to shine the next morning. Glory there might have been a storm. But God is going to repair. He's going to restore. He's going to renew you. Yes. And I'm believing that today. So the word of the Lord, he's searching. He's searching. Who can I strengthen today? Who can I cure today? Who can I fortify today? Who can I touch today? And it says, whose heart is perfect. Now, in the past, I would have read that, and I would have thought I had to do everything I had to do in order to make it right with God. I had to pray this long. I had to read this long. I had to do all this right. I had to speak this, this thou and me, and pray perfectly. Okay? But no. He's saying, whose heart is complete towards me? Who, who has given their heart to me? I'm not talking about perfect walk. I'm talking about that you believe that God can change you. You, I have given my heart completely. If he shows you an area of your life that you need to give to him, surrender it to him and say, God, here I am. God, I know I'm not doing it right, but God, I'm here. I'm here and I want you to take it and I want you to change it. I want you to fix it. I want you to do it, God. My heart is for you. That doesn't mean we're going to walk it out all perfect. Because we're not. I'll be the first to tell you. We're not going to work it up, walk it out all perfect. But God, let us be a people that are completely given over to you. And that he, and in that moment, he can change your heart. Yes, that's right. Yes. He can change yes. our direction. Yes. He can change our action. Yes. Righteousness being revealed in our lives. That others may see it. That's right. Yes. And it says the word of the Lord came to Jonah. 
That, that word, word, means to arrange. God arranged a meeting mm, with good. Jonah. God wants to arrange a meeting with you and yeah, I today. Yeah. I'm believing that the word, the word meaning to speak, he spoke directly to the heart of Jonah. God is a personal God. And I really wish that Sean and Caitlin were here because we were standing outside the other day and Caitlin had come with us on the women's trip. And she said in that moment, I'm going on this women's trip. I realized that this church is my church. Amen. She said, it's not just my dad's church anymore. It's my church. And we started having church in the church parking lot. And we started talking about how Jesus is my Jesus. Yes. That you can make it personal for you. It is your, he is your Jesus. Yes. This is my God. This is a personal walk with the Lord. It doesn't have to be mama and daddy's or grandma and grandpa's or aunts or uncles or your best friend's walk anymore. He is your Jesus. Yes. You make it personal. He is my God. Yes. He is my God. Yes. And I believe that the Lord arranged a meeting with Jonah where he could speak directly into the, his heart and directly into his life. And then that word also means to subdue, means to come under the control of. So this is where we get tripped up a little bit. Right, right, right. See, the Holy Spirit wants us to come under the control of his spirit yeah. and under the control of his word. And we don't like to be controlled. Right, right. <laughs> we want to do our own thing. We want to do what we want to do. But the Holy Spirit said, come, I want to subdue you. And you know what I love about the Lord is he's never going to lead us in the wrong direction. That's right. He's right. never going to lead us down. Man, we might go through some things, but it is to prosper us and not to harm us. Yes. To give us a hope and an expected end. God wants to bless you, but wants to use you to bless others. He didn't save us just so we could be saved. He saved us so we could be the light of the world, so we could be the salt of the earth, so others. Now I preached an amazing message about going out into the highways, into the byways, and getting past ourselves and calling people in. That's what he wants us to do as believers, to be an example to our friends, to be an example to our family members. And the word of the Lord came unto Jonah and it subdued him. That means in that very moment, he was under the control of the Holy Spirit. We are a spirit-filled church. Amen. And we want to be spirit-led and spirit-controlled. Yes. And Jonah, I love this, his name means dove. Yes. I thought that was really cool. And I was like, well, a dove is a type and shadow of the Holy Spirit. So that means that the Holy Spirit was upon Jonah, that the hand of God was upon Jonah, and those that he calls, he will fully equip. So wherever he has called you to, and yet whatever family he has placed you in, whatever situation that you find yourself yeah. in, whatever job you find yourself in, he has called you there, and he will fully equip you for the job which he has called Thank you God. to do. Hallelujah. Believe it. He's not going to call you to do something that he's not going to equip you to do. Um, now we have our own inconsistencies and we have our own weaknesses. But God wants to show himself strong yes. Yes. in you. Yes. Yes. He wants to show himself strong in you. And he calls this prophet. And I want to remind you, it's not just Jonah that has a divine call mm -hmm. upon their life. Yeah. It's you. <coughs> Amen. It's Amen. you. It's you. Yes. It's yes. you. Yes. It's you to be an example to your children. Right. It's you that have been called to be an example to your friends. It's yes. you. It's you yes. that has been called to be an example at your job. It's you that has been called. It's you. It's not just Jonah. The hand of God is upon you. Yes. It's upon yes. you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. The anointing of God. You are marked by the presence of God. The kingdom of God dwells in yes. you. You have access at all times through the precious blood of the Lamb. Yes. You can come into his throne. Me and Pastor Matt were talking about this when we were in prayer. and I, We had to cancel youth group, unfortunately. But because of the storm, we had no 
electricity. But God was dealing with me about coming into the throne, and it was a throne of grace, not a throne of judgment. It was a throne, yes. a throne of grace, a throne come boldly with all our troubles, yes, yes. with all our cares. Come yes. boldly, child of God. I know that I know, Amy, if one of your kids had, had a problem, they could come boldly yes. to you. Yes. They'd be right at your feet yes. like, Mama, this is what happened. Mama, I need you. To, we can do that with the Lord. Yes. You yes. can come boldly and grace. You can receive grace. Find mercy. What do you find when you come into the throne? You find grace. And you find mercy when you come boldly to his throne. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Lord. But see, Jonah had experienced this. See, and God wants us, what we experience with the Lord, for us to share with others. For us to walk it out. And the, the word of the Lord comes to this man and says, arise, get up. And go this way. Get up and go this way. This was the word of God that was leading us in a specific direction. The word will always lead us to Christ. Yes. Amen. Yes. The, the word will always lead us to the light. Yes. The word will always lead us to the living water. Yes. And it will always produce a godly lifestyle. Yes. You want to hear what that looks like? Well, I'm going to share it even if you don't. Amen. <laughs> Galatians 5.22 says, But the, the fruit of the Spirit is love. Yeah. Oh, hallelujah. Love. Yeah. Love. Let me say this. Look at your neighbor and say love. <laughs> love. It's unconditional yeah. love. Yeah. Okay? God's love has no conditions yeah. on it. Amen. We love. You know, sometimes I think about where I've come from, and if the person didn't come into the jail cell while I was at to tell me about Jesus, I don't know what would have happened that day. See, they could have been like, well, she's too far gone. She's behind bars. She's never going to make it out. Da -da 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 -da, and never come to tell me about Jesus. But the love of God compels yeah. us to go to those that no one else wants to go to. Yeah. To go to the broken, to go to the hurting. Don't become so high-minded in our Christianese right. right. that we feel like we can't go to the broken down. Amen. To those that are hurting. To those that don't look like us, don't talk like us, don't smell like us. Listen, I didn't smell so good when I was out there either. And I didn't look so hot right. either. Right. And I didn't have anything yeah. at all. Uh -huh. So don't, don't despise what the Lord wants to do. Don't despise small beginnings and what God wants to do because you never know. Amen. You Amen. never know the person that you're talking to. Amen. You never know your child that you're pouring yes. into yes. what they are going to become. Hallelujah. You never Hallelujah. know what God is going to do with them. So Amen. I want to tell you this, don't quit. Yes. Don't quit. Don't quit praying. Don't quit believing. Don't quit. Don't quit. And here we have this man of God. And, Thank you, Jesus. And we're talking about this godly lifestyle that God wants to produce. But you know how God produces things in us? He puts us through trials. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. He puts us through some things. Yes. And not because he's a harsh God, no. but because he wants to change us. Yes. Right. Amen. He wants to remove some of those cancerous areas, so to say, in our hearts. Amen. And he wants to put some new things in us, like joy, yeah. like peace. Yeah. He, wants us to he wants to teach us how to be long-suffering <laughs> and suffer long in trials and with relationships. Yeah. He wants to teach us to be gentle, to be good, to have faith. To be humble and to have self-control. To have self-control. Against such things there is no law. Hallelujah. See, his word and his spirit are always moving us in this direction. In this direction. To be closer to him and to be more in his presence. But see, God doesn't just do this so we could just sit here and soak up his presence. He 
wants others to experience his presence. Yes. He wants others to experience what we have experienced. Siri wants me to try again. <laughs> <laughs> no, you're doing good, sister. Don't let go. Keep going. <laughs> He wants to give us a second chance. Yeah. You, all right, I have one. You've ever been where God tells you to go minister to someone yeah. and you don't? Oh, God. And then all of a sudden, or to be kind to someone, or whatever the case may be, and you don't do it. And you know that you were supposed to do it. Right. And you walk away and you're like, oh, man. And then... All of a sudden, God brings that circumstance around again, or that person around again, or here they are again, and God says, okay, here's your chance again. Yeah. Okay, here's your chance again. Well, God is a God of second chances. Yeah. See, God told Jonah to go to Nineveh, yeah. and he didn't want anything to do with that business right there. Mm -hmm. He didn't, and he decided not to go. But I love this, that he's the God of second chances, because not only did he do it with Jonah, but he did it with Noah. And I'm going to read a couple things, and you know what, we're going to get real real in here, because I, I want you to see these men and women of God, and what, they were men and women of God, but what they have also encountered. See, Noah was a drunk. Right. Oh, but God used him <laughs> to build the ark. <laughs> now, let's talk about this. Abraham was too old to have a baby. <laughs> And God decided to give him the promise. Yes. Jacob was a liar. That's right. Come on. No, we're it says in the church sometimes we're like, oh, well, God, bless God. God can't use her. God can't yes. use him. No way. He went and drank this weekend. No, God can turn that situation yes, around. God can use that person. God can remove that area of their life and put them on the right Amen. track. Amen. Leah, she wasn't that beautiful to behold. Right, mm -hmm. right. Okay, sometimes we feel like we gotta look a certain way or be a certain way, but God used her. Mm -hmm. Joseph was abused by his brothers. Mm -hmm. Sometimes we're so broke down from life mm -hmm. and where people have run all over yeah. us that we feel like God cannot use us, but God used Joseph and put him second yes. in command, yes. and he used him. Yes. Amen. Moses had a stuttering problem. Right. Well, maybe we feel like we can't go and talk to that person because we aren't fully equipped in our speech or we're not so eloquent, eloquent with our words right. that we can't speak. Well, God used Moses to let his people go. Yeah. Rahab was a prostitute. Was. Oh, my goodness. Right, right. But God used yes. Rahab. Yes. Elijah was suicidal. I didn't, so I had to look some of these up because I was like, wait, let me make sure I know what I'm saying. So I looked this up, and Elijah in 1 Kings 19.4 says, It's enough, Lord. Take my life from me. Wow. Well, maybe there's been times in our lives where our trials have been so beaten down and we've been so heavy that we're like, it's enough, Lord. Take my my life for me. I'm done with this. But God used Elijah as a mighty man Hallelujah. of God. Hallelujah. Isaiah preached naked. I was like, what? I had to look that up too. <laughs> Listen, nobody do that, okay? <laughs> but God did it as a representation that he could see all things that Israel know that God's telling you to do something like that. Okay? Jonah ran from God. Job lost everything. Peter denied Christ three times. Not just once. Three times. The disciples fell asleep while praying. Anybody ever fall asleep in a service before a prayer meeting? <laughs> the Samaritan woman was divorced. Zach
many times. I want to remind you that he is the God of second yes. chances Hallelujah. and that he is able Hallelujah. to lead Hallelujah. you in the right way. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So God calls Jonah to Nineveh. And Nineveh was a flourishing country. I mean, city, excuse me. City, it was actually the capital of the Assyrian Empire. But this flourishing city had no regard for God. Mm. They had no regard for his ways. Mm. They had no regard, sound familiar? Yeah, they yeah. had no regard for his word. They had no regard for righteousness, but yet was flourishing. Mm. I want to say this. They do not mistake our flourishing mm. or God's mercy upon our life. That it would mark his hand a blessing upon us. Mm. Yeah. That's deep. Do you hear what I'm saying? Right, right, right. Just because your bank account is full. Right, right. Just because you have everything you need and you begin to flourish in a materialistic type of way does not mean that hand, the, the hand of God is blessing is upon our life. We need to be very careful yeah. that we know that we're right with God and that he is put in his proper place and that he is first and foremost yes. in yes. our life. I'm not saying that God can't bless you and I'm not saying that God can't move in that direction, but this city was full of riches and it was a trick, a deception. That they were right with God, but they had no regard. Mm. Our nation is a nation that flourishes. Right, right. But we have no regard for God and his ways. Just like Pastor Matt was preaching on this morning. But you know what? And, and it, it's given as a representation in the scripture when Jesus is tempted by Satan. Don't think that the devil can't make you flourish. Mm -hmm. See, it says Jesus in Luke 4, 1, Jesus being full of the Holy Ghost returned to Jordan and was led by the Spirit into the wilderness. He was led into the wilderness. Forty days being tempted by the devil. Let's see in verse four, verse um, chapter 4, verse 5, it says, The devil taking him up into a high mountain showed him all the kingdoms of the world in that moment of time. And the devil said unto him, All this power I will give thee, and the glory of them. For that is delivered unto me, and to whosoever I will give it. For if thou therefore will worship me, all of this shall be thine. And Jesus answered and said unto him, Get thee behind me, Satan. It is written, Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him only shall I serve thee. Why am I showing you this? Because the devil himself can tempt you with power, money, prestige. Okay, he can tempt you with all kinds of things and say, Okay, Pamela, I'm going to give all of this if you would just forsake your God. I'm going to give all of this if you would just go this way. Okay, you want to lie and work and cheat on your taxes, and I'm going to give you all of this so you can get ahead. Okay, the devil will tempt us that we flourish in the natural, but God is saying, no, I can bless you even better, yes, and I can yes. make it right, and I can make it right with me. But this, this city, they had no regard for God. Right. They wanted nothing. You, God told Jonah, go and tell them of all their wickedness. Right. A people that had wanted nothing to do with God at all. James 4.4 4 says, You adulterers and adulteresses, mm. know you not that the friendship of the world is an enmity with God? Whosoever therefore will be a friend of the world is an enemy of God. Adulterers and adulteresses mean you unfaithful. He is, he's not, he's speaking to believers. Right, right. He's not speaking to the world. Right. And James says you are unfaithful. If you are a friendship of the world, that means if you are fond, if you take a liking to. Mm. Are we in alliance with the things of this world? Help us, Lord. Do we like and enjoy the things of this world? Are we fond of them? And it says you are at 
enmity with God. Help us, Lord. That means that we are in opposition. Right. We are in opposition with God. God help us that we never Jesus. be in opposition Jesus. with your word or your way yes. or your will for our lives. Yes, God. God help us, Lord. Yes. And this this place of Nineveh was wicked and lewd, meant living without restraint. Oh, help us, Lord. Oh, God. See, sometimes we feel like when God puts boundaries around us that he's a harsh God, but usually all the time those boundaries are meant to help us prosper yeah. and to help us grow. And that means that those things that we thought we needed, we don't need. Those things, but I, I, I was one that lived without restraint, without boundaries. It did not care. It didn't matter who I hurt or how I had to get it or what I wanted to do. If it felt good, I was doing it. And this is how this city was, lit, was living. It, this city was established by Nimrod, and his name means we shall rebel. Mm. It was founded upon rebellion, and that was who built the kingdom of Babel, which meant confusion. Mm. See, this was a place of human pride and self-will. This was a place that had no acknowledgement of God. And 600,000 people were living there, and God was sending one man. Help us, Lord. 600,000. Now, I kind of understand Jonah a little bit. Like, I do. Like, I can kind of understand how he might have been feeling at that time. But this was a time and a season that no Gentiles were being called to God. This was a Gentile city of cruel and hostile Ninevites. And they were a dominating force at the time. See, but sin shall have no dominion over you, says the Lord. Yeah. And he says, and the word of God says, and their wickedness came up before me. That means that nothing escapes the eye of God. And wickedness in this verse means it was good for nothing. It was not profitable. So everything that they were doing in the kingdom of God was not, pros was not profitable. What was coming up before him was wickedness. And I started thinking this sobering thought and convicting thought. What comes up before God on my behalf? Think about that. He said their wickedness was before me. So what is God seeing in our lives? What is coming up before God? Are we being faithful? And I'm not talking to every jot and tittle. I'm talking about faithful to him. Yeah. Faithful to trust him. Yeah. Faithful to believe him. <laughs> faithful to come to him. Are we being faithful to the work that he did on Calvary? And I said, God, help me. Help me that you would see my trust in you. That you would see my belief in you. Because God is holy and he is just. Right. And no sin shall dwell in his presence. He doesn't overlook sin. Amen. He doesn't. So if you just didn't get caught yet, there's still consequences. There's still consequences. There's death. The wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus. Yes. See, God doesn't, he's slow to anger though. That's what I love about the Lord. Yes. He's a slow to anger and abounding in mercy. Yes. But it still doesn't escape his eye. That's right. That's right. He sees, he hears, and he knows. But God didn't just come to judge. Yes. He came to set free. Hallelujah. He came to show, and he came to set free. Yes. That's why he wanted to send Jonah to Nineveh. That's right. Because he wanted to tell them, there is freedom from the wickedness that yes. you are committing yes. before the Lord. There is freedom from this. Hallelujah. Yes. But I don't know. I, I might have been running with Jonah. I'm not so sure. I mean, <laughs> just saying. So Jonah flees from the presence of God. It says in verse 3, but Jonah rose up to flee. Flee means flee suddenly. Like Jonah was out. Right. Like as soon as he heard that word, he's like, I'm going. I'm not going there. There's no way. There's no way I'm going before this people. And he flees from the presence of of the Lord, and he goes down to Joppa, and he found a ship going to Tarshish, so he paid the fare, therefore. Mm 
Look, I'm, I want to I want to point that out. Jonah had to pay a fare in order to run away mm -hmm. from the presence of God. Yep. There will yep. be consequences, and we will pay because of the choices that we make if we are not moving in the direction right. that the right. Lord has told us to move in. Mm -hmm. right. And it will produce death in our lives, and our children's lives, and our family's lives, and anybody else's lives that are watching. Yeah. Mm -hmm. In our own life. He runs. He pays this fare. Instead of Jonah obeying the voice of God and going in that direction that God was causing, calling him, he decided to run. Have you ever found yourself running from the direction that God has called you to go in? Maybe he has called you to surrender something this morning and you've been holding on to that thing very tightly. We keep holding on to it. Maybe he has called us to make it right with someone that we feel just. And how they've and how we've acted and how they've treated us. So we're just gonna hold that on to that thing. Maybe we he wants our whole heart, but we say, you know what? I'm gonna ride the fence for a little while longer. I'm not so sure about this thing. Maybe we aren't trusting him with our future, or our family, or our children. Maybe we are running to other things. See, Jonah ran another way. He ran to another thing for comfort and escape. The reality. He was running from the reality that God was presenting before him. Maybe he has been calling us to repent. And we decided that we're not going to. See, if you would bring that um, map up for me. I want you to see this on the screen. Hallelujah. Jonah decided that he was going to run in another direction that took him way outside the will of God. When we decide to go our own way and do our own thing, it takes us further and further and further away from the presence of God and the plan of God. Did you know that you could prolong the plan of God in your life? Yeah. Like he wants to do something in your life, but we keep wanting to do our own thing. So then it takes longer for her to produce the plan of God in your life. Well, sin will take us further than we ever want to go and it will keep us there longer than we ever want to stay and it will take from us more than we ever have to give Help it will take us further than we've ever wanted to go see Joppa is where he started and he goes 2,500 miles outside of where God called him to go where God called him to go 550 miles to Nineveh Oh. See, it was going to be a, a, a shorter trip. But see, Jonah had to go all the way to Tarshish and then go all. See, you see, God's going to do what he's going to do in our lives. His will is not going to change for our lives. But God's going to send us and he's going to get us a, a our attention. Yeah. He's going to get. Now, not every storm in our life is meant for to cause us to repent or redirect us. Right. This specific storm was. Some storms in our lives just happen to see if we're going to trust them and if we're going to believe him. Right. Amen. But I want to say to you, don't go so far and be kept so long and have to pay so much more than you ever have to give. Do what God is telling you to do. Surrender what God is telling you to surrender. Be where God is telling you to be. Go where God is telling you to go. And if you don't know, open these pages. Yes. <laughs> I'm going to pull a pastor Matt. <laughs> <laughs> and he, the Lord will speak to yes. you. Yes. yes. I promise you, yes, the will. Lord will speak to you. Absolutely. And if you're unsure, it's okay. Ask him. Yes. If you're not sure again, ask him again. Yes. If you're not sure still, ask him again. God wants to make his will clear to you. And he wants to confirm it to you. And he will show you through his word. 
and not only that, but we have a better covenant. So you have the Holy Spirit living inside of you. See, Jonah didn't have the Holy Spirit living inside of him. But you have the Holy Spirit living inside of you. Yes. Yes. That can lead yes. and guide yes. and direct your life. But I, what I love about this is that even though Jonah decided to do what he wanted to do, God will stop at nothing. Nothing. To get his children's attention. If your child was crossing the street and they didn't see the traffic coming that way, I guarantee, Mike, you would be out there getting Aubrey from that traffic in 2.5 seconds. Right, you would right. read that God you redirects your life, moves you in the direction. You are his child. His hand is upon you. He wants to bless you and use you for his glory. And if we have gotten off the beaten path, God will create a fish. Yeah. To swallow you yeah. up and to get you yeah. where you need to yeah. be. That sounds funny to us, but this actually happened. That's right. right. Yeah. This right. actually happened. God created a fish yeah. to get get Jonah where he was supposed to be. He will stop at nothing. That's right. I mean nothing to get you in the right place. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. To get you in the right direction. But the Lord said. Say the Lord sent the Lord the Lord sent. a great wind into the sea, that there was a tempest in the sea. So the ship was like to be broken. I want to say this, that the Holy Ghost inside of you is your GPS tracking yes. system. Yes. The Holy Ghost can track exactly where you are, yes. exactly what time you're there, and exactly what you're doing. God, that didn't escape God's eye that Jonah was hiding down in the bottom of the boat. Yeah, let's say that down. He went down to Joppa, down the side of the ship, down to the bottom of the boat. Okay, if our lives are going down, we might want to take a look at that. We might want to see God. Why? God, what's going on? God, is there something I'm not seeing? Right. God, is there there's trouble and turmoil? What's going on, Lord? What is happening? Now, sometimes God just allows it, but there's other times we need to repent. Right. There's other times that we right. need to surrender. There's other times that we need to see something in our lives. And I'm going to tell you this, the Holy Ghost is going to reroute your system, Amen. your whole system. Mm -hmm. It's going to be an override. God has come to totally change who we are. And this storm was sent to get Jonah's attention. Yes. yes. And you know what Jonah's doing? He's sleeping. <laughs> now, I'm a light sleeper. So I wake up at night and she can sleep. <laughs> she can sleep. My whole house was sleeping during this storm. And I was up with the dogs like. <laughs> right? But Jonah got so hardened. See, we can shut up. All right, y'all ready? You've ever had the GPS and it says reroute, 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 and you get so sick of hearing the reroute, you turn it off? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Come on. We can do that with the Lord. That's right. right. He can say reroute, you go in the wrong direction, reroute, don't look at that, reroute, don't go there, reroute, don't say that, reroute, re and we can be like, boop. That's right. I don't hear that no more. And then we lost. Help us, Lord. Yes. Yes. <laughs> then we lost. So God, help us. Help us, Lord. And Jonah is in the bottom of the boat and is about to be broken into pieces, meaning it's going to be crushed. It's going to be destroyed. This boat is going to be broke. And Jonah is down there sleeping in the bottom of the ship. And that word for sleeping meant it's, he was stupefied. He was cast into death to stun. Mm. He was down there, shut the Holy Spirit's mouth, and just was down there sleeping. He didn't care about the people around him. Mm. The whole boat was in an uproar. And these men, these mariners, they're crying out to their gods. Mm. Not the God. Mm. Their gods. At least they're crying out. <laughs> And Jonah's down there sleeping, not caring about what's going on. I want to tell you this. Our actions can affect those around us. Yes. And they will affect those around us. The way we treat each other, the way we act, 
the way that we believe, the things that we do, will affect those around us. Mm -hmm. If God has told you to go in a certain direction and we are stu stubborn and stiff-necked and we are not, it can create such a storm in our life that has come to destroy you and those around you. Yeah. But God will use it to redirect our lives. But see, these souls were hanging in the balance, 600,000 souls were hanging in the balance. That's what was going on. God was trying to get Jonah to a place where 600,000 souls were going to repent and that were going to be saved. See, God didn't say, Jonah, go to Nineveh and 600,000 souls will be saved. He didn't say that. He just said, Jonah, go to Nineveh. Right. He didn't give him the end game. <laughs> God done rarely gives us the end game. Right, right. He just wants us to trust him and believe him in the direction that he is sending us. Right. Right. And the outcome was going to be that these 600,000 souls were going to be saved. But Jonah, he's down there and has shut everything out. And now they're trying, the mariners are trying to fix it. They're throwing everything off the ship. They're like, well, how can we fix this? How can we fix this? How can we fix this? And then they go down to Jonah and they say, wake up! What's going on? Call on your God, oh sleeping one. God forbid we get rebuked by someone that does not believe. Come forward. Wow. 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 That's what happened. Right, right. <laughs> I'll tell you this. My stepdad, he's a funny guy. This one time I was going through something. And he said, Angela, you made your bed now lie in it. Mm -hmm. But it was so convicting mm -hmm. because I, I knew he said, did, did in the word, doesn't the word of God say uh, that God won't put on you more than you can bear? Wow. Because I was at Bible college and I was ready to go. And I had made a mess of some things and that's none of your business. <laughs> 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 and I was ready to go back to New Jersey. And I'm telling you, I felt, have you ever like, and I'm sure you probably have, and if you haven't, you're probably not telling the truth. But um, shut the voice of the Spirit of God off so much and wanted to do your own thing that you could feel yourself getting hard. Like, you can feel your heart getting hard. Like, you know that you are. And it becomes a darkness that envelops you, but yeah. you are so set on doing your own thing that it just doesn't matter anymore. And Naya, she tried to pull me out, man, and she just couldn't pull me out of this darkness. It was going to take the Spirit of God to pull me out, and I was ready to go back to New Jersey. And I'm like, I'm just going, and I'm going to live my own life. This is my life. <laughs> and I, I, I was setting up tickets and everything. Help us, Lord. And the Lord spoke. Jesus. He just broke through my heart. Jesus. Thank he broke through my heart and I had to repent. I said, I forgive me, Lord. But I had see, but I had to go back to the Bible college and face the mess that I had created. Mm. See, sometimes we create a mess up in the church house. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And then we don't want to come to service come on. no more. Come on. <laughs> Preach it. Because I created a mess. Right, right. And I gotta see so and so and such and such and da 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 da. And listen, I was uh, I was the RA at the Bible college, and I had to preach in the Bible college chapels. Uh -oh. oh, yeah. So talk about having to create a mess and then having to face it. And make sure that your heart was right before you preach behind the pulpit. Come on. And I'm telling you, but God used my stepdad to tell me those things. To say, Angela, you made your bed, now lie in it. <laughs> And didn't God say he wouldn't put on you more than you could bear? Oh and it was so convicting oh that I had to repent. There was like no other way. God, you were right. Here I am. I made a mess of things, but you can change it. And this is where you've called me to. This is what you've called me to do. You're creating me. And God, here I am. Mm. And it was hard. I'm not even going to tell you it was easy. <laughs> I cried day in and day out. I went through some hard things, but I didn't quit. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. I didn't quit, but there was a storm. But as soon as Jonah said, cast me into the sea. Wow. As soon as Jonah told them, okay, okay, cast me into the sea, the wind ceased. See, as soon as we turn our face back towards the Lord. Yes, Lord. Yeah. And we repent. We ask God, put me on the right path. As soon as we do that, I mean, I'm talking about, there's an immediate peace yeah. that comes. Yeah. 
Yeah. There is an immediate peace when you're in the going in the right direction with right. the Lord. There's immediate. It's immediate. And the wind cease. But I do want to say this. I asked the kids, because they threw Jonah off the boat. Jonah was the problem. Yeah. I said, I, I asked the kids in there, I said, what do we need to throw off the boat? Mm. What's in our lives that we need to throw off the boat? This is some of the kids' answers. Disrespect. Mm. Okay, adults, come on. <laughs> Hate. Mm. These are the kids' answers. Pain. Anxiety. The babies with the anxiety, okay? Fear. Unforgiveness. Bad attitudes. Now I came up with some of my own. Pride. Proving ourselves. Self-will. Stubbornness. Wrong desire. Lust. The list goes on and on and on and on. What do we need to throw off the boat? Whatever you need to throw off the boat today, I suggest to you, hand it over to the Lord. Thank Get it you off your ship. Jesus. Because your ship's going to go down. Yeah. If you don't want, let the wind cease. Hand it over. Whatever it is, whatever needs to be handed over to the Lord, I suggest to you, hand it over and let the wind and the raging cease. And you know what happened when, when Jonah got thrown off the boat? The men that were on the boat got saved. Yeah, yeah. Wait, no, check this out. So Jonah wasn't even supposed to be on the boat. But God in his foreknowledge knew that Jonah was going to be on the boat. So jo God used Jonah and his mistakes to save, after he repents, to save the mariners that are on the boat. They begin to praise God and make vows to God. Don't, you're, listen, nothing is wasted. Amen. Amen. If you feel like you've been too far gone and we have messed up too much, nothing is wasted. Amen. When we begin to repent and ask God to change us and do in us what he has already set out to do, those around you will see the difference. See, they seen God cease the storm and the wind and that the boat stayed intact. And they began to praise God. Yeah, yeah. So don't feel like, well, I just can't come back to the Lord now. I just can't change directions now. I'm already too far gone. Mm. No, God used that to save those that were on the boat. Let God use your mistakes. Yeah. Right? Yeah. To teach you, to yeah. train you, yes. and to send you. Yeah. That others would know. Nothing is wasted. Yes. Hallelujah. And then we Hallelujah. see... We see in verse 17, oh. now the Lord had prepared a great fish to swallow up Jonah, and Jonah was in the belly of the fish three days and three nights. God already knew in his foreknowledge that he was going to have to prepare a way of escape for Jonah. God has already prepared a way of escape through the blood of Jesus yes, Christ yes, for you and I yes. when he sent oh, his son. There is no chain that he cannot break. There is no bondage that he cannot break. There is no wound that he cannot heal. There is no marriage that he cannot repair. There is no child that he cannot reach. There is nothing, and I mean nothing, that God cannot do. He already made a way of escape. Hallelujah. And he prepared this fish. Means that he properly weighed out the circumstance. God knew exactly how big the fish had to be. Exactly how long Jonah was going to be there. And exactly and that Jonah was going to repent. And he prepares this fish and orders it to swallow up Jonah. He will use any means necessary to get our attention. And while he's doing it, he's shaping our character. And Jonah had a come to Jesus meeting in the belly of a whale. Yes. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He had a prayer meeting yeah. in the belly of the whale. Yeah. If you're going through something and you find yourself in the belly of the whale, have a prayer meeting with Jesus. Yeah, because you know what happens? And I love this. He was there three days and three nights. That shows me the cross of Jesus Christ. Yeah. And the power and the resurrection. <laughs> See, even though Jonah was in the belly of the whale and he was there. And I mean, come on, it probably sunk in there. 
<laughs> it was slimy yeah. and nasty yeah. and dark. See, we made slime in the class. I can't do that with you guys. <laughs> we made slime. But anyway, and the kids liked it. But Jonah, I'm sure, wasn't liking it. Right. He was not liking being in the belly of the whale. But he had a prayer meeting, and the power yes, of God yes. showed oh up God. in the belly of the whale oh, and God. caused him to get up and say, oh. okay, God, I'm ready to go now. Wherever you want me to go, send me. Yes. I'm ready. Yes. But he met him where? In the belly, in the trial, in the situation. He had to throw off the ship what needed to go, even in the terrible spot that he was in, and he met with Jesus. Yes. Yes. Sometimes we need to meet with yes. Jesus. Yes. 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 And Pastor Matt preached all my scriptures earlier. <laughs> <laughs> but we need to know that we are buried with him. Yes. We have been baptized. Identify yourself. You are dead with Christ. Yes. I am buried with Christ. Hallelujah. But not only that, I am raised with Christ. Hallelujah. I am raised. I am a new woman. I am a new man. I have, there's a new spirit that lives within me. Yes. The same spirit that raised Christ from the dead now lives in me. Yes. So whatever that situation is, whatever you have blown to pieces, whatever mistakes we have made, whatever we need to do, the same spirit. Spirit, and I'll have you up here. The same spirit that Christ raised Christ from the grave lives Hallelujah. in you. Hallelujah. Thank you to perform Hallelujah. and do what you cannot do yes. in yourself. Yes. Amen. You can't get there on your own. Amen. But God Jesus. is going to get you there. So I'm believing, and if you will please stand with me. I'm believing. Hallelujah. That if you need supernatural wisdom and decisions that need to be made, I ask you to come. If you need a breakthrough in your life, I ask you to come. If you need your faith to be restored, I ask you to come. If you need to throw some stuff off your ship, I ask you to come. If you find yourself in the belly of the whale and you need resurrection power to get up and to do what God is calling you to do, I ask you to come. And I don't ask you, he does. The altar is a representation of God. I've heard your word. I receive your word, and I ask you to move. It's not a scary place. It's a place of faith saying, God, I've heard your word. You're giving me an opportunity to respond to your 